to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah, Bahashem Rakak Kadash. Now, double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone who do well and salute. And they must love you, sister brothers, who push this truth week in and week out, man. Y'all, brothers, stay strong. We almost home. And uh, I had to go for a round two on this one, man. Uh, I did a video on um, about the White House celebrates Passover 2021, in which they were basically mocking the Lord's Passover. And I wanted to get another part of this video where they continue to basically mock the Most High. And don't give them any credit. They don't get the most high. No type of credit, man. You know? No glory. They don't give them his glory. And he don't need that damn credit. He don't need that glory because all the credit and glory goes to, goes to him any damn way. You know? But just showing you these devils, man. They slick. They real slick. I'm going to show y'all what she did in this video. And, of course, I'm coming with them scriptures, man. I'm coming with them scriptures. And, Lord willing, you be edified, man. Hey, these people running around calling themselves the Jews. These people are the worst people on this planet, and they're really the Edomites, according to the Bible. They're uh, Esau, Amalek. You read about in the scriptures, man. Enemies, adversaries to the Most High. And, of course, adversaries to the Most High's people, man. And who is the Most High's people? The Israelites. The real Israelites, the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. That's what they're known as today. So, let's get into it. Now... We come to the telling of the story. What I told you is really the, the beating heart of the Seder. This is the story of a powerful ruler who forcefully and violently suppresses the Israelite minority living under his rule, brutally enslaving the people for hundreds of years. But after centuries of suffering, God hears the cries of the oppressed and redeems them with a strong hand and an outstretched arm, with plagues and with wonders culminating in the splitting of the sea. The message of this story is that God stands on the side of the oppressed and will bend the arc of the moral universe toward justice. But this is not only a story about divine grace and mercy. This is also the story of Shifra and Pua, the midwives in the first chapter of the book of Exodus, who resisted Pharaoh's decree that the Hebrew babies must be killed on the birth stool. This is the story of Batia, Pharaoh's daughter, who defies Pharaoh from within his own home. This is the story of Miriam, who found her prophetic voice as a small girl of only five years old. You know, she keeps singling out the women. Also, the story of this woman, that woman, that woman, you know? Because uh, uh, that feminist demon slipping out of her while she's speaking about the Passover, man. You know, but she's the Edomite, so you don't expect anything righteous from her, you know. But she's the devil. It's the story of Moses, who grew up with all of the power and privilege of a prince and abandoned it all when he witnessed the oppression of the... You would have thought she would mention Moses first, but let's go. Vulnerable in his own midst, being transformed into a prophet and a teacher, a freedom, freedom fighter, fighter, and a labor, and a labor organizer. organizer. This is the story, the story of the Israelite people, people who did not quietly submit to the horrors of enslavement, but cried out and held faith even after hundreds of years of brutal oppression. It's the story of people who went out and painted their doorposts with lamb's blood publicly proclaiming not only their faith, but their desperate yearning to free themselves from the shackles of their enslavement. It's a story of a people who did not wait for... And they painted the, uh, their doorpost with lamb's blood because it was an order from the Most High. That your ass better paint your doorpost with that lamb's blood. Because once I do this, once I pass over the land of Egypt, I'm destroying all the firstborn of the Egyptians, man. And if you're at... If you uh if you ain't got doing blood on your doorpost, you're gonna get the same, man. You know, so that basically they was in fear of the most high. They wanted salvation. They didn't want to get caught up in the destruction of their oppressors, which were the uh, ancient Egyptians. And today you got the modern Egyptians, you so-called white people, and we're li we're we're living in modern Egypt. You know, many brothers have their videos on how this is modern Egypt. The scriptures say we're gonna go into a new Egypt again with ships. Who went in this uh, slocking? We're going to go, we gonna go into slavery into a new Egypt again with ships. Who went into slavery on slave ships? You know? Hey, you, you, what's the point of taking a damn ship to Egypt when Egypt is not so far from the land of Israel? You can walk, man. Or you can take horse and carriage. Or, you know? So, who runs this modern day Egypt, man? The so-called white people. Especially the so-called Jewish white people. They, they, they the top of the heap. 
They're basically the creme de la creme of the Edomites, man. You know? And um, so I'm going to continue on. God to miraculously split. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Desperate yearning to. This is the point right here. Hold on. The main point. Watch what this devil about to say. Free themselves from the shackles of their enslavement. It's a story of a people who did not wait for God to miraculously split the sea, but were so hungry for freedom that they marched forward into the raging waters. And only once they nearly drowned did that sea part. Now, is that in the scriptures that they didn't wait on the Lord? They just jumped in the sea and just then they're drowned. And then the Lord split the sea. <laughs> is that in the scriptures? Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're so hungry for freedom that they marched forward into the raging waters. And only once they nearly drowned did that sea part. The more that ain't in the scriptures, man. Let's get straight to it, man. These devils, man. These Edomites, man. They don't want to get the most high's glory. They always got to throw in a bunch of lies, man. You know, this is Exodus. Let me see. Verse. No, Exodus chapter 14. I started 13. Exodus 14 and 13. <clears throat> it says, uh, and Moses said unto the people, free ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord and see the salvation of the Lord which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Mm. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. So you devils don't want to get the most highest credit. The scriptures say the Lord is going to fight for us, his people, the Israelite people. And um, continue on. Okay, verse 15, and the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on the dry ground through the midst of the sea. Run it back. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on the dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I beheld, and I behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts and upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen, and the angel of Yahweh, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went from behind, before their face and stood behind them. And they came, hold on, Slocky, give me a second. First, okay. I'm going to keep on going. Uh, and they came between the camp of the Egyptians and it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And there was a cloud and darkness to them, but they gave light by night to these. Uh, so that the one came not near the other all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all the night and made the sea dry land. And the waters were divided. Read it again. Verse 21. And the Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea up on the dry ground and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. The waters were like a wall. When the Israelites were going through the Red Sea, the waters were like a wall, man, on, their, on each side of them. On their left hand side and their right hand side, man. You know. Um, and the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots and his horsemen. And they came to pass it in the morning. But in the morning, watch the Lord look on to the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavenly. 
so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fight it for them against the Egyptians. So the most I get all the credit, man. And uh even, hey, even the Egyptians had to get the most highest credit when it was all said and done. As you can see, they in terror, man. They're in fear. Because of the destruction, they were in the midst of the destruction, man. Most I was jacking them up. I'm going to continue on. And the Lord said unto... Uh, Okay, and the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thy hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And read it again. The Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thy hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength. When the morning appeared and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, man. In the sea. We was walking on the sea floor. <laughs> That's insane. The Lord was drowning the Egyptians, man, who were trying to pursue his people. They were trying to pursue the Lord's chosen people. Man. And that was the, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans you see today, which you call them all these derogatory terms like illegal aliens, niggas, Negroes, African Americans, Native Americans, indigenous. Nah, man, we Israelites from the 12 lost tribes of Israel, man. Continue on. Okay, verse 28. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Exactly, man. That's the true story. And... The Lord, scriptures say, if you add to or take away from these scriptures, man, your book going to be taken out of the, uh, it's locky. Your name going to be taken out of the book of life, man. You condemned. You're going to be destroyed, basically. You know? Well, we know Esau going to do that regardless because why? He's the devil, man. That's that's his lot. He's supposed to do those type of things. We don't. The Israelite people, we don't supposed to do that, man. You know, we're supposed to follow what's commanded. Now, let's hear this devil. So hungry for freedom that they marched forward into the raging waters, and only once they nearly drowned did that sea part. The moral message of this story is that liberation requires courageous human action. As Frederick Douglass preached in The true liberation of the Israelites can be so simple. All we would have to do is cry to the Most High, face Jerusalem. Which, if you in uh, America, Jerusalem is to the east. So face Jerusalem, pray to the Jerusalem, Jerusalem and call upon the name of Yahweh Bashi Yahusha in repentance and sincerity, beg for forgiveness, and He'll save all of us. I'm talking about if we do that as a unit, as a one big people, man, all of us, He'll save us. But you know, Jake Wicked, so it just can't be that simple. So the way for liberation is through the straight gate, man. We got to continue to repent and call upon the name of Yahweh Bashan Yahushua, but we got to do works, man, you know, which prove our faith. Our works show our faith, man. You know, we got to keep his commandments, keep his laws, keep his statutes, man. Keep his traditions. The ones you read about in the scriptures. You know, we got to actually put forth the effort diligently. And, um, so this devil boy, they, they do not like giving the most high credit because they don't really believe in the most high. And they damn sure don't believe in your house, <laughs> you know? So. 1857. There is no struggle. There is no progress without struggle. This struggle may be a moral one or it may be a physical one, but it must be a struggle. Power, he wrote concedes nothing without a demand it never did and it never will this year let this story remind us that redemption only comes 
when human beings partner with the Holy One to bend the arc of history, to engage the struggle for freedom. Now, this story that we tell at our... So do we part partner with the Holy One or do we submit to the Holy One? <laughs> you got to watch these devils, man. Seder tables is the... Listen to them when they talk, man. Dissect what they saying, man. You know? A demand it never did and it never will. This year, let this story remind us that redemption only comes when human beings partner with the Holy One to bend the arc of history, to engage the struggle for freedom. Now, this story that we tell at our... Because us not submitting to God got us into slavery in ancient Egypt. Just like us not submitting to the Most High got us into uh, slavery in America, man. You know, our rebellion, our sins... Got us in this. And that, that's what puts us in the slavery. That's what the Lord bring down these, these different nations down on us and put their damn boot on our neck, you know, and subjugate us, man. And enforce their laws and their statues upon us and their wicked gods, man. They're false gods. Because you don't want to serve the most high. Hey, the most high got something for that ass, man. You know, that's what happened. Seder tables is the origin story of the Jewish people. It's a reminder through the generations that even in times of profound struggle, our collective story does not end in suffering. History is not static. Suffering is not without meaning. Life and love, justice and dignity will prevail. And that's why this story survived for thousands of years. Even facing liquidation in the Warsaw Ghetto, Jews prepared for... Well, this story survived for thousands of years because the word of the Lord endured forever, man. I think that's what Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8. Don't quote me on it, but it might be that verse, man. The word of the Lord endured for endures forever, man. You know, but I got some more just hammering the point home on uh hold on Salaki, Ezekiel 20. On uh, how to, all the credit and glory go to the Most High, man. This is uh, Ezekiel 20, verse 5. And say unto them, thus said the Lord. Hold on. And say unto them, thus said the Lord, Yahweh, in the day when I chose Israel and lifted up my hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I lifted up my hand unto them, saying, I am the Lord, your power. In the day that I, that I lifted up my hand, Unto them to bring them forth out of the land of Egypt into a land that I have this espied for them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Then said I unto them, Cast ye away every man the abominations of his eyes, and defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. But they rebelled against me and were not hearken unto me. They did not every man cast away the abominations of their eyes, neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them. To accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. But I wrote for my name's sake, and it should not be polluted in Slocking. But I wrote for my name's sake, for my name's sake, that it should not be polluted before the heathen among whom they were, in whose sight I made myself known unto them in bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. Wherefore I caused them to go forth out of the land of Egypt and brought them into the wilderness and I gave them my statues and showed them my judgments, which is if a man do, he shall even live in them. Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord and sanctify that sanctify them. And, um, hold on, let me go back to the main point. Verse nine, but I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen among whom they were and whose sight I made myself known Unto them and bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. So the Most High did all this for his name's sake, man. Our name, it's like it. his name is upon us. The name Yahweh, it's upon us, man. You look at the tribe of Judah. What? It, how do you say Judah in the Hebrew? Yahweh, which means thanks, Yahweh. Thank you, Yahweh. Israel, Yasharala in the Hebrew, which means he is a prince of God. Benjamin, Banyamyam in the Hebrew, which means son in the right hand, so on and so forth, man. The Lord's name is upon us, man. And the scriptures say we're the Lord's what? His wife, his fervent lover. 
And your wife, she takes on what? Your last name. She takes on your name. Because she belongs to him now. She's a property of him now. Well, so let me fast forward real quick. I want to hit another point because this woman Vader says something else. And Jewish prisoners in death camps saved flour to make matzah and whispered the words devil. of the Haggadah late into the night to one another. Because this story and its moral message have been a... Let's go. Oh, Lord. Commercial. Soccer. That's what I need right there. Let's the next do side. this. <laughs> Before we demonstrate what this uh, taking of the wine from the glass looks like, I want to say that people often think that these plagues were intended as a punishment for the wrongs that the Egyptians committed against our Israelite ancestors. But this year, I want to lift up the teaching of Sforno, a 15th century Italian rabbi, who said that the plagues weren't intended to be punitive at all. They were actually designed to awaken the conscience of Pharaoh and his people to help them see the Hold on, what did this woman just say? that these plagues were intended as a punishment for the wrongs that the Egyptians before we demonstrate what this uh, taking of the wine from the glass looks like, I want to say that people often think that these plagues were intended as a punishment for the wrongs that the Egyptians committed against our Israelite ancestors. But this year I want to lift... Well, they were they were punishment. They were definitely punishment against the Egyptians, man, for what they did to the Israelite people. You know? You know, the teaching of Sforno, a 15th century Italian rabbi, who said that the plagues weren't intended to be punitive at all. They were actually designed to awaken the conscience of Pharaoh and his people to help. She actually go to a damn rabbi, quote a rabbi from the 15th century on what the plagues were about. You could easily just go to the scripture and read why the Lord plagued the damn Egyptians, man. The Lord plagued the Egyptians because they didn't want to, because they was putting hell on the Israelite people. And it was time for those Egyptian people to release the Israelite people and those Egyptian people to be judged, put in their damn place, man. You know? But that's how these devils are, man. They, they ain't quoting that one script. Let them see the truth. The plagues were designed to inspire Pharaoh to repent, to make tshuva, because God wanted to elicit in Pharaoh and his people a true change of heart. Oh, Lord. For Pharaoh to repent, huh? That ain't what my Bible say, man. I'm gonna go and jump straight to it. And uh, hey, Lord, will I be edified? Romans nine, Romans nine, and let's see, what verse is that? Romans nine. Matter of fact, I started at Romans nine and thirteen. The banger. <laughs> uh, Romans nine and thirteen, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he said to Moses, Lockin, for he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of Yahweh that showeth mercy. Exactly. It's not of that rabbi from the 15th century. It's not his will. It's the Most High's will. It's his will to show mercy on whom he, whom, he will, whom he will show mercy to. And he didn't show mercy to Pharaoh and the Egyptians. You know, verse 17. For the scriptures said unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose, have I raised thee up that I might show my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Read it again. For the scriptures said unto Pharaoh. Even for the same purpose have I raised thee up. So the most I may put Pharaoh in power, made Pharaoh proud as hell, and put the spirit on Pharaoh to not want to release the Israelite people. Uh, Slogger, not want to release the Israelite people from hard bondage, man, from slavery. Moses said, let my people go, man. That was the most High speaking through him. But Pharaoh hardened his heart, man, proud as hell. It says, for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. And Pharaoh had a mighty army, man. A very powerful army. The Most High, man, the Most High performed a, mir a miracle when he destroyed them, man. And that was nothing. That was, that, 
He probably didn't even blink his eyes to uh, make that happen. The Most High probably didn't even blink his eyes to make that happen, man. <laughs> That's how powerful he is. He probably didn't even snap his fingers, man. I don't know. And, uh... I'm going to continue on. Therefore, hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will, he harden it. Thou will say then unto me, Why doeth he yet find fault for who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that replies against Yahweh? Shall the thing form to him that formed it? So, the, shall the thing form say to him that formed it? Why hast thou made me thus? Exactly, man. So. Pharaoh tried to answer against the Most High. Reply against the Most High. Talk crazy against the Most High. And look where it got him, you know. But the Most High raised him up to do that, man. You know. And let me see something real quick. He showed his power, man. That story is extremely famous to this very day, man. But this new exodus... The second great exodus, which will be the Israelites exiting up out of uh, modern day Egypt, which is America, is going to be far, even. it's going to trump that last exodus. It's going to eclipse that last exodus. It's going to make that last exodus look like, man, like some child play, man. You know? They tell you that in what? Jeremiah 16 and 14? Matter of fact, I might get that real quick, but hold up real quick. Give me a second. Okay, okay. Yeah, that is Jeremiah 16 and 14. 16 and 14. It's actually quoted a few times in the scriptures. But hold on, I'm going to just go to that one. This is Jeremiah 16 and... 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Hold on. It's one, uh, soon to come, there's, it's going to be no more be said, because this, this, this story, that this exodus that's coming up is going to be just far greater, man. So it's going to be no more be said that the Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them. And I will bring them again into that land that I gave them to their fathers. Mm. The land of the north. That's New Egypt, man. North America. North America, man. And it said all the other lands which he dro drove us, which that's everywhere. We, we're scattered people. We're scattered sheep. You know? So, hey, the triumphant of the wicked is short, man. Y'all day coming, man. Y'all sitting there trying to play like y'all the children of Israel, you so-called Jews. But y'all just making it look just, oh, Lord, it just look corny and just backwards. And it just ain't according to the scriptures. Y'all y'all don't follow Yahweh Shah, man. Y'all don't follow the most, huh? You know? Y'all don't even call him the name of y'all. Some of y'all act like y'all believe in God. But most of y'all... Never say y'all believe in the Messiah. Some of y'all act like y'all believe in God, but y'all call him Hashem, which means the name. Y'all never call him the name of Yahweh. Like I uh, quoted in my last script, uh, video, Malachi 1 and 14, the name of the Lord is dreadful among the heathen, man. Dreadful, man. Man. But anyway, y'all day coming, man. Y'all are the synagogue of Satan, man. Y'all day coming, you damn devils, man. Oh, I would like to say all oh, praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahusha, Bashem Rakakwadash. Shalom on to the whole for elect. Kwam Yashala, a Bible ball. Hmm.